What's up everybody and welcome. Today we are unboxing the Pioneer DDJ-1000, but this is not an ordinary unboxing video because I'm hanging out with the one and only the Mighty Modingo. What's what up y'all? What up? You got a new toy. Yes, I did. So you were generous enough to wait until you could bring it to Passionate DJ Studios and open it up here for the family. I've walked by this thing for about 12 hours, eyeballing it really hard, but I promised Dave we'd do this uh, for y'all. So this is more like a miniature episode of the Passionate DJ podcast almost, so this will be fun. Uh, so really quick, before we unbox this, um, I don't want to get too in-depth, but what made you actually ultimately decide on the DDJ-1000? I do a lot of corporate stuff, and lately I've kind of become a big fan of the Spotify integration that uh, Algorithm has made with uh, DJ Pro 2 and DJ Pro for the iPad. And um, we actually, if you go back a couple episodes Dave and I were talking about the mix on four uh, there was really no way to integrate Spotify into any of the controllers that I currently had so I made the decision to go with the DDJ 1000 because it has the integration but also same has the same form factor as the Nexus platform but in general you wanted access to that record box stuff too and so now you kind of this is the best of all worlds for your situation yeah exactly I mean I have with the tractor stuff I have an S2 S4 F1 X1 Z1 I'll probably still be a, a tractor head when it comes to like doing shows but I know in order to take that next step I need to learn the record box platform and kind of get used to the CDJ uh, setup yeah. so instead of spending six grand on a full-on Nexus I figured this would be a good appropriate step yeah, and I've been real excited. You know, our audience has been really interested in this. Uh, I get asked about it, I get emails about it, about this particular unit. You know, they want to know about the screens in the middle and the whole deal. So I'm excited to break into this thing. So uh, if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's do this. Let's tear into it. You guys get to see it first before I do, even. This will be the longest unboxing video ever. Oh, it doesn't open. I thought it was a clamshell. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. we got to get that new controller smell ready. There's uh, instructions and looks like some power cords. Okay, I'll go ahead and tear into this real quick. So we've got a license key for Record Box DJ. Is that what this is? So it comes with a full license? Yep. That's pretty awesome. We've got our manual, and then of course all the necessary cables. We've got an AC adapter in there. It is a separate power brick, but it's pretty small. Then the power cord breaks out from that and one of those little butterfly connectors. And woo, look at that bad boy. Isn't that shiny? Wow. Wow, that looks great. So the first thing that, that jumps out at me is the size of the jog wheels. Yeah, the size jog wheels like you'd see on the uh, Nexus platform. Uh, you don't realize, or at least I don't realize when looking at other Pioneer controllers that they're so much smaller yeah. than the CDJ ones until you see them, what it actually looks like on a controller. And that's the reason why this one has such a large footprint is because they intentionally designed it with the full size jog wheels. Now the cool thing about that is uh, as a result of that, the screens are bigger than I thought they would be. Yeah, they, yeah I, I was going to say that same thing. Um, the first thing that kind of pops out to me is actually how thin it is. Yeah, it is pretty slim profile. All right, can you swing it around the back there and let's look at the ports? Sure. All right, so we've got an XLR out. We've got a master output through RCAs, your quarter-inch booth output. Um, you do have a ground for turntables on the back of here. And then, of course, your four channels. Uh, your channels three and four, which are the outer channels, are uh, switchable between line and phono. And then dual USB, which is great and dual mics and then of course a place for your power adapter so you've got all the essentials um, I'm noticing right off the bat as well that the layout of the controller is not symmetrical or it, uh, you know what I mean? it's it is symmetrical it's not mirrored is what I mean uh, so what I'm saying here is that the tempo slider is on the right of the jog wheel on either side so it really does come closer to mimicking that sort of pioneer Nexus CDJ setup in that sense uh, so that when you're going back and forth between that setup, it's pretty much uh, the same deal. Yeah. I'm also noticing that the browse and load knobs are at the top right of each deck. Uh, it looks pretty convenient. It's pretty obvious what everything does as I look at it. You've got loop controls here on the top left of each one. 
and you don't really have all that clutter that you get from normal controllers, normal controllers uh, being uh, for other DJ software, um, where you have all the effects knobs up here at the top, because it's a more traditional pioneer style setup where you have the beat effects section down here, and then the color, sound color effects across the top there. Uh, the finish is real glossy, I'm noticing, uh, especially here in the mixing section, and then it kind of has that simulated brushed aluminum effect here on the sides. Um, covering the players. Um, do you want to maybe put it down here so I don't knock it out of your hands and we could try the beat pads there? How do those feel? Oh, wow. They're very real sturdy. They don't uh, have a lot of play. They, they don't click. Like gonna, yeah, they seem like they're going to be very responsive, though. Cue and play. They have a click to it. They feel just like uh, CDJs. The jog wheels themselves. Now, here's the cool thing about this controller, and this is something that I've mentioned about other... Uh, lesser CDJs such as the XDJ 1000s that I have over at the booth is that uh, one of the things that Pioneer does to save uh, cost on that is they don't include features like jog wheel adjust but this one actually has that so right here on the top uh, almost at the top right of the jog wheels you can turn it between light and heavy and so you got a real loose jog wheel on the light end and then you can twist it all the way to the right and you got to give it a little more effort. So maybe if you're a scratch DJ and you want to adjust that one way or the other, depending on how that feels, uh, you can dial that right in. How's the resistance on the up faders here? Feels like a Pioneer mixer. Yeah, good tension, yeah. Basically, everything on here feels like a Pioneer mixer, which actually is pretty impressive because typically I, I would expect a controller to feel like a controller, not so much like a mixer, but this kind of has that heavy duty build quality, um, especially for being an actual controller and not a standalone device. Yeah, that's when you still require the use of a laptop, but you have the form factor, like I stated earlier, of the Nexus setup. So the dual USB, that'll be pretty cool. So if you wanted to use this to do tag sets or anything like that, you wanted to hook up uh, to two uh, audio interfaces for some reason or another, maybe you're using one for time code and one to record out of or whatever it is, uh, this will be able to support that. All right, so this is awesome. Uh, maybe we can plug it in and light it up and see what those screens look like. You gonna open those real quick. Okay, let's see how she looks. I don't know if the screens will come up with anything significant without the software running. We do get the logos on there. Okay, those are really nice. You, real nice and crisp, good uh, high resolution screens. Uh, I think that's all it's gonna give us without hooking up the software. Um, but I can comment on the uh, the general, like uh, the LED backlighting, everything is really bright. Uh, this is a very bright room if you can't tell and everything is just really bright. I don't have any problem seeing this stuff. The beat effects has a little tiny screen right here uh, above the traditional mixer section and it says low cut echo because that's what's selected right now. You can change it and the effects change on the screen there. And that is a, you probably can't tell on the camera, but that's a super sharp text display. It looks yeah. really nice. Yeah, once I get through the holiday season after a couple of gigs, I'll let Dave uh, take a crack at this and he'll give you a full on product review. But I'll definitely give you a review of uh, my field testing. I have a gig this Friday, sorry, this Saturday, uh, a wedding, which is, like I said, part of the reason why I'm using that Spotify integration. And then also I'll have another uh, gig on the following Friday. So kind of give you a follow up to how those go down. OK, great. So, uh, yeah, maybe we'll get through the, the holidays here and then uh, you can come back and we can maybe uh, I can kind of pick your brain on how your experience was actually in the field Absolutely. using this thing and everything. All right, man. Well, thanks so much for bringing this by and enjoy. I imagine you're going to take this home and tear into it yeah. uh, right away. We'll so I, I won't hold you up any longer. <laughs> take care. And uh, we will find links to the DDJ 1000 in the show notes below. Also join us on the Passionate DJ podcast at passionatedj.com. Peace.